Hey, what's up? It's Jared with Ditch Auto. Today we've got two Nikons to talk about and compare. I have the Nikon Z6 and the Nikon D500. Now, this is really interesting for me because I am not a native Nikon shooter, but I've been shooting with the Nikon Z6 for the last six months and I've really enjoyed it. And of course, uh, actually my most popular video on this channel is on the Nikon D7200. And so I have a little bit of experience shooting with Nikon, but uh, having had access to the Nikon D500, I I've really just enjoyed Nikon lately. And I think uh, it's, it's because of the customization that Nikon brings. There's just more flexibility there. And I've talked about this in a few other videos, so I won't go deep into that here. But I wanted to compare these two cameras because anybody who is in the camera market right now and has not made the switch to mirrorless is probably considering or at least thinking about it. And I know that when I talk to other people about cameras, they're asking me a lot about mirrorless, especially since I've been shooting mirrorless cameras for almost six years now. And so the conversation definitely always goes there. But DSLR still holds a really important part in the whole camera ecosystem. And I wanted to talk a little bit today about my experiences with both of these cameras in case you are working on making that choice right now and you want a little bit of extra insight into uh, what the differences are between these two. So they're both excellent cameras and that's the challenging thing is that DSLR cameras are still really good. There's a lot of good cameras and they're still coming out. They're still putting out DSLR cameras and mirrorless is also a thing. And I know that like some manufacturers like Sony seem to have gone much deeper down the mirrorless road than their DSLRs and uh, Canon and Nikon are still kind of holding on to both. But depending on what you're most interested in and kind of what you're most comfortable with, you might decide to choose one over the other. So it's really going to come down to that. And I think one of the biggest choices or decisions that I would have to make is if I already had lenses that I had purchased, if I was already well invested into a platform, that might make me choose differently. But we're going to talk a little bit about that today in this video. So what's similar? Well, they're both still CMOS sensors 14-bit. Uh, despite the fact that this is a mirrorless camera and this is a mirrored DSLR style camera, they both still operate with a CMOS sensor that are 14-bit. And so there's no real difference there as far as the base uh, construction of the sensor. They're both still CMOS. Um, both of these cameras will support the Nikon full frame. That's the F-mount lenses. Of course, on this particular camera, the D500, there is the crop sensor lenses that are also available for it. Those crop sensor lenses are not going to work on the Z line of cameras, even with the adapter. So you can put full frame lenses right on this D500 easily, no adapter needed, or you can use, of course, lenses that were designed for the crop factor of this camera. Or if you're considering moving over to a Z6, you could still buy the full frame lenses and, and operate with those. Both of these cameras have a native ISO of 51,200, which is really good. They're both awesome and low light. And one of the things that made me switch to mirrorless a long time ago was low light performance. DSLRs really just seem to be lacking. And even back in the day, Nikon just wasn't that good in low light, but they have caught up and Nikon performs really well in low light. Both of these cameras are exceptional in low light. They both also have internal interval recording options, which means you could do time lapses right from within the cameras without needing any sort of external gear. That's pretty common today in cameras, but it's really nice that they both have that option. Both of these cameras also shoot 4K at 30p. They both have 30 minute internal recording limits, which is kind of a bummer, but they do a great job at capturing 4K video. Now the screen articulation is also pretty much the same on both of these cameras. They have the kind of tilt up and flip back display that doesn't go all the way up and over or out to the side like some other camera manufacturers. So if that's a limitation for you, it's not really much of a difference on these cameras, though the D500 does seem to tilt down a little bit further. Now both of these cameras support XQD memory. That is a very fast 
form of memory that is starting to come out in some cameras. Nikon seems to be kind of the ones leading the way with that memory in their, uh, you know, this style of camera. But the XQD has read and write speeds that are far superior to SD, and I love offloading my photos and my 4K video footage onto my computer because it is extremely faster than using an SD card. So both of these cameras have support for XQD. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth has also become pretty important. Both of these cameras have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I use Wi-Fi for transferring photos from the camera to my phone, and I use Bluetooth for connecting through the app to get GPS location automatically written to my photos. So it's nice that both of these cameras support that. Now in cameras this size, you would definitely expect both of them to have a microphone and a headphone jack, and both of them do, so that's great. They're both set for shooting video really well. A microphone jack is definitely a necessity, and a headphone jack is great for monitoring that audio level. And probably one of the most exciting similarities is the fact that both of these cameras can utilize the same type of battery. So if you are coming from Nikon DSLR already and have a few batteries, the Nikon Z6 is going to support that, and it's going to be no problem. Problem. So let's talk about some of those differences. Obviously, there's going to be quite a few differences in cameras like this just because of their construction and the way that they operate. Uh, now, the D500 is a 20.9 megapixel, whereas the Z6 has 24.5 megapixels, so a little bit higher resolution on the Z6. Now, one of the obvious big differences besides this one being mirrorless and this one being DSLR is that the Z6 is a full frame sensor and the D500 is an APS-C with a 1.5 x crop so what that means is that when you put a 24 to 70 millimeter lens or any lens for that matter on your z6 it's going to operate at that rated focal range whereas with the d500 you're going to have that 1.5 crop and so your 24 to 70 is going to act more like a, a more telephoto zoom as opposed to what you're getting here and some people like that though because with the APS-C if you shoot wildlife or you shoot anything that's going to be far away having that crop means means that you don't have to spend as much money on those big giant zoom lenses or those big telephoto lenses because you can get a little bit more zoom out of the lenses that you buy for your camera. I apologize for the break in. It was on my outline and is an extremely important feature, so I wanted to make sure that I mentioned it, and that is the in-body stabilization on the Nikon Z6. In-body stabilization has changed the game, especially for those of us that shoot some video or want to shoot some longer exposure shots, and it's a necessity, especially when we have lenses that don't have stabilization built in, such as most of the prime lenses. So a major, major feature is that the Nikon Z6 has that internal stabilization. On top of that, it also has some electronic stabilization, which adds to that, that makes the stabilization even better on the Nikon Z6. The D500 has some digital stabilization offerings for video shooting, but that's about it. Other than that, you're left to what the lens offers. So the Nikon Z6 definitely wins out there. Now there's a big difference in viewfinder operation too. There's an electronic viewfinder on this camera. So when you look through the eyepiece, you're actually seeing a screen and you're seeing what the camera sees. Whereas on a DSLR style camera, when you look through the viewfinder, it is an optical viewfinder, which means you are seeing what your eye would would see. You're not seeing anything other than the camera just composing the shot within the frame. You aren't seeing what the camera sees. Essentially, uh, you have to actually get your settings and use metering for that. So there's a little bit difference in the experience there. And in some situations, for example, shooting in a studio situation where you have strobes and other lighting and stuff going on, sometimes optical is a little bit better because obviously the strobes aren't going off entirely. So it's hard to really see what you're looking at through a camera like this once you have your settings set up correctly. So studio shooting sometimes can be a little bit better because of the optical viewfinder and uh, that's changing. It's definitely gotten a lot better for mirrorless but things are still a little bit easier for shooting in a studio because of the optical viewfinder. And you may just like that experience of an optical viewfinder better. I like being able to look at the electronic EVF and see my image playback right from within the viewfinder without having to go back to the monitor. And so there's pros and cons either way. It really comes down to the type of shooting that you're gonna be doing and what you feel most comfortable with. Now in those low light shooting situations, the D500 does appear to be a little bit more sensitive in low light to 
autofocus capabilities. And that's important because when you're in low light situations, the camera has a hard time seeing. And so focusing becomes an issue. And it's a little bit more sensitive both on paper and in my tests. The autofocus on the D500 seems to be a little bit better in low light. But the Z6 is definitely really capable and really uh, does well in low light with autofocus. So I'm not uh, going to anticipate any issues there that you'll probably experience. But if you do shoot in really low light situations, like maybe you're a wedding photographer and uh, you're concerned about whether or not mirrorless is the way to go for you, the D500 is a little bit better in low light as far as pulling autofocus on your subjects. So the Z6 on paper seems to lead in continuous shooting a little bit. So if you shoot sports or action and you want to capture as many photos as possible, as fast as possible, the Z6 will shoot up to 12 images per second and this will shoot 10. But there's a little bit of a difference there. This will shoot up to 200 images at its full resolution, full raw and all of that stuff. So you got that QXD card in there. You'll probably want that to get the full use out of it. With the Z6 here, it does shoot 12 frames per second, but you have to be shooting at 8-bit. So 12-bit, you're not going to get that. And also, it does slow down a little bit if you're not shooting in fully manual. So if your exposure isn't locked off, it's going to slow down a little bit. So this camera does slow down when you make it think a little too much. But if you do have your camera in manual mode, if you go down to maybe uh, 10 bit or 8 bit. As far as the photo goes, it's going to operate a lot faster, but still, even at full uh, capacity and in manual mode, it's going to be a little bit faster than the D500. But the D500 can go a full 200 images, and I wasn't able to get the Nikon to go a full 200 images. Now, if you're shooting video and you want that high frame rate to slow your footage down, you need the Z6 because it will go up to 120 frames per second in HD, whereas the D500 stops at 60p. Another thing that's really exciting about the Z6 is that it's supposed to get full 4K raw output to an external recorder, which is pretty awesome. And not, that's not something that I would shoot in very often, but it would be really nice to have. And this camera is not going to get something like that. And I doubt that any DSLR will probably get something like that from Nikon, but the Z6 should be getting it. And I'll talk more about why I would want to shoot that way in another video. Of course, when it does come to this camera, I will be testing testing it and reporting back to all of you. Now, one thing that the D500 does have that the Z6 does not have is an SD card slot and an XQD card slot. So if you're not ready to make that jump to XQD memory, which of course is more expensive, you can continue to use your SD cards in this camera, but the Z6 is going to require you to go to XQD. There's no way around that because there is no internal SD card slot. And with this camera, you have the dual slot, so you can shoot to both slots if you want, have the XQD card and the SD card in there. You can write your RAW files to the XQD and your JPEGs to the SD, whereas on this camera, you have to write them all to the XQD. But what's nice is that the XQD is fast enough to handle a lot because it's a very fast card, so I haven't found it to be that big of a deal. And there's definitely a weight difference between these cameras as well. The Nikon D500 weighs 1.89 pounds without the lens, and the Z6 weighs 1.29 pounds without the lens. Both of these cameras have 24 to 70 2.8 lenses on them, and the Z6 is significantly lighter. This is a pretty large lens that we have on this camera, the uh, 24 to 70 f2.8, and of course the body being a little heavier itself makes for a much heavier pack. All right, so let's talk about why you would choose the D500. Well, the D500 is an excellent camera, and I probably wouldn't have really looked at it much had I not had some really great experiences with Nikon lately with the Z6. But to choose this camera, I would choose it because it has more lens options right now for sure. The Z6 has a lot of lenses coming, but there aren't a whole lot of lens options that are available yet, and the lenses that are available are kind of expensive. They're not high-end lenses, and they're not baseline level lenses either. They're kind of middle-of-the-road lenses. And most of these uh, camera manufacturers, not only Nikon, have like a cheap entry level, a midline lens, and then an expensive higher end lens. And so for example, this is uh, the Nikkor 2470 f2.8 
the lens that's on here. So this is a nice lens, pretty expensive, um, but the equivalent lens for the Z6 is gonna cost a lot more money than this, and there aren't a whole lot of zoom lens options for the Nikon Z6. So you choose the D500 if you need to have a variety range of lenses, and then of course, if you already have some lenses, and especially if they are crop sensor lenses, so like DX lenses, for your Nikon, you're definitely gonna wanna go with uh, staying with this body type because like I said at the beginning of the video, the lenses for the DX uh, crop sensor camera are not going to work adapted over to the Z6, so you'd have to get rid of all of your crop sensor lenses. But if you do have full frame lenses, you'll be okay. You can of course adapt those to the Z6 and the, the adapter actually works really well. The D500 also just has a larger body and more buttons on it. And so if you like that, that's something that you might appreciate about this camera. If you have a bigger hand, the ergonomics of this camera is probably gonna feel a little bit better because the Z6 is a little bit smaller. I still really like the ergonomics of the Z6, but the ergonomics of this camera gives me a lot to hold on to. It almost might be a little too much at times, but I love the button layout of the Nikon cameras. I think it's really well thought out. And for somebody who wants to shoot and not worry about looking around for buttons, Maybe you want to try and utilize muscle memory to use those buttons and not have to be looking at them all the time. The button layout is really good on this camera. And of course, with all the buttons along the left-hand side, which the reason that the Nikon DSLR cameras have so many buttons is because when you are reviewing your image, you do have to look at the back of the display. And so having buttons over on this side is fine. Obviously, you're not typically shooting in this way. Another uh, couple of buttons that I really like is the little button here with a switch on the side that lets you go between autofocus and manual. And then there's a button in the middle that you can hold down and switch between autofocus modes, which I love. It's great placement because I'm holding my camera like this and my thumb is right there. I thought about this the other day. I guarantee that Nikon people are the only people who only hold their camera this way. You know, sometimes you see somebody holding a camera this way and it just drives me up the wall. But a Nikon user will hold the camera this way because there's actual buttons down here. And I thought that was just that was just a fun observation that I had, or maybe it was funny to me, but anyways. So um, more people also are still using Nikon DSLR over Nikon mirrorless. Even though the mirrorless movement is well underway, for Nikon, it's still a relatively new thing. And most Nikon shooters are still shooting DSLR. So if you have a lot of friends or people in your community that you're going to be around and doing photography with are Nikon DSLR shooters, you may consider going with a Nikon DSLR like the D500 over mirrorless because you'll have more community there. If you show up with the mirrorless, uh, you know, you may or may not be able to get too much help from people because the system may be a little confusing to them. And uh, so I don't know, that might be something to consider. For me, I really do enjoy the Nikon Z6 and I wouldn't let what people, what other people have influence that, but it really, it really does depend. Maybe that is important to you, which is why I brought it up. So why would you choose the Z6 over the D500? Well, I think that mirrorless is kind of the future. We see all the camera manufacturers really focusing more on mirrorless than they are their DSLR line. The DSLR cameras only get updated every few years, whereas the mirrorless, there are so many technological changes happening. They're coming out with new versions all the time, and they just keep getting better and better each year. Now, the new lens technology that they're actually coming out with for this line of cameras is really good and I've had a lot of experience with 24 to 70 millimeter lenses all the way back from my days of shooting Canon DSLR to the Sony lenses and now the Nikon lenses and this lens is a top-notch 24 to 70 millimeter lens it is not cheap though and that is one of the things that is a big consideration here it isn't the only 24 to 70 millimeter lens that they have for this camera as they also have an f4 model as well that is kind of the kit lens for this camera uh, which is actually a really good lens. The only reason that I have this f2.8 on here is because I have access to it. It's a fantastic lens and I would rather shoot with it than the f4. But the f4 is an amazing lens and if you check out some of my other videos on the z6, you'll hear me talk at, at exhaustion about that lens and how good it actually is for a more entry-level 24-70mm to 70 millimeter lens. 
Now, of course, I talked already a little bit about ergonomics, but the ergonomics of the Z6 is really good. It actually does feel a little bit better in the hand than the D500. The D500 is a lot to hold on to, and some people do like that. The Nikon button system is a simplified version of that on this camera. Of course, with mirrorless cameras, there are a lot less buttons typically because we're looking through the electronic EVF. We're not necessarily holding our camera down like this nearly as much because we can preview our images in the electronic EVF. So not as many buttons are needed and also we have a, a larger display essentially for the smaller camera body and so there's less buttons. So I actually kind of like that though because it makes the process of using this camera just a little more simplified. There's less buttons to have to remember uh, what their functions are. There's less buttons to get in the way and you can just focus more on shooting and of course all the buttons that are just super useful and that I would use 99.9% .9 of the time are on the top upper half of the back of the camera and on the top of the camera. And then of course on the Z6, there's two function buttons right down there on the barrel uh, by the base of the camera. And those are great as well. So the button layout is simplified. I think a little bit easier to use on this camera than maybe the D500, but depending on your shooting style, you may like having those extra buttons. And if you do, maybe the D500 is for you. Now, of course, this camera is also significantly lighter weight and not by a huge amount, but it is a lighter weight camera system. The lenses that have also been coming out are slightly smaller as well. Nikon has been very much known for having big lenses. Even their uh, lenses that typically would be more compact, like a prime lens, are still pretty large. The prime lenses that are coming out right now for the Z6 are pretty small and compact and lightweight, and so you can carry around a lot more with you without it becoming kind of uh, cumbersome. And so if you're looking for something that's a little more lightweight, the Z6 is definitely going to be that and definitely going into the future. I'm excited to see what a 70 to 200 millimeter lens for this camera is going to look and feel like when it does finally come out. So let's talk about my closing thoughts on these two cameras. Now Nikon just of itself has definitely changed in my perspective so much over the last six months as I've spent a lot of time with the Z6. And of course that has opened me up to wanting to try more of the DSLRs as well. And so I've just really been impressed with what Nikon has been doing, even though it seems maybe they've been sitting on their hands at times. They've definitely been working at producing the best of what they can, and the Nikon Z6 is definitely a, uh, a result of that. Now their DSLR cameras like the D500 and some of these other cameras seem to have a little bit longer of a shelf life. They put out a great camera that kind of holds the test of time, and you can utilize that camera for several years without worrying about another version coming out. So if you are more adverse to FOMO <laughs> and fear of missing out, you're definitely going to want to go DSLR because even though the D500 is a couple years old, that camera still has really good specs and performs really well. And I don't even see any reason why Nikon would need to update that camera for another year or two. Whereas the Z6 is something that they're going to have to update quite often. Though both cameras have exceptional performance. Low light has come so far. I talked a little bit about that earlier with Nikon. And both cameras just perform really well. They've got great battery life. Uh, everything seems to just work great with those cameras and I've just really enjoyed my experience with both of them obviously I've been shooting a lot longer with the Z6 but going and grabbing a D500 just seems much more natural to me now that I've had some more experience with Nikon and I did really like my experience with the D500 as well they both also have great performance and I think the value that you get out of the cameras based on their price is pretty good as well Nikon does seem to be a little bit more expensive as far as the body go than maybe what you can see with Canon and Sony, but you're getting a platform and a system that seems to be a, maybe a little bit more thought out as far as the user experience goes. The cameras for from Sony and Canon, I feel can be kind of more just grab and go and they're easier to figure out. But with Nikon, they focus on things like how fast a camera starts up. Both of these cameras power up and are ready to go so quickly. The low light performance is something they've definitely put a lot of time and effort into lately. And of course the ergonomics and the buttons and everything I think are just much more 
uh, smarter placement and just it's well more thought out with the Nikon cameras than other manufacturers. So you're getting a lot of value there, even though maybe the cameras themselves might be a little bit more expensive than their competitors. But I always recommend that you try before you buy. These days you can rent cameras and try them out for a week for not, you know, not really that much money and get an experience with that camera before you decide to invest a bunch of money. If you use lenspro2go.com, you can use the coupon code Jared, which is my first name, J-E-R-A-D. You'll save 15% off of your first order with them. And you can, you can even order both cameras, actually both this camera, the D500, and a Canon 90D that I'm comparing in another video came from Lens Pro to Go, and it's just very easy to get access to pretty much anything you need from there. And it's great to get that experience before actually putting down the money and then maybe deciding in a month or two that you've made the wrong decision. Definitely rent first, try it out before you invest all that money. And that's all I've got to say about that. So thanks so much for checking out this video. If it did help you out, give me a thumbs up and let me know if I missed anything or if you have any additional questions down in the comment section below. We have our Facebook group, the Ditch Auto Facebook group, where all of us hang out and talk photography, share photos, and we'd love for you to come along and join us. So check out the link in the description below to that. I also have links in the description to these cameras and the lenses and some of the accessories that I use with them. Clicking on those links when you make your purchase definitely helps support the channel and keeps us moving over here. So I appreciate when you do that. But that's gonna do it for this video. Until next time, take care. Get that camera out, go take some pictures. Join the Facebook group and let's hang out in there and talk photography. We'll see you next time.